We are Legion. What's up, comic fam, and welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and we have a great re- week in comics coming out, so let's jump right in. All right, if you're new to the channel or you're coming back and you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. Go ahead and hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell. It'll alert you anytime new content drops. If you don't want to miss out, we've got awesome stuff coming on. We've got live chats. We have unboxings. We have our weekly pool list video. So a lot of cool stuff that you don't want to miss out on. So like I said, we have a lot of good stuff coming out this week. And uh Right off the bat, whenever it comes out, it always makes the first uh, book on my list, and that's Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk issue number 41, that beautiful cover by Alex Ross. And as you can tell from this cover, we have that classic battle of the Thing versus the Hulk that started at the end of the last issue and is bleeding over to this issue. But it's a lot different because the Hulk is com- almost completely depowered. He's just skin and bones. He's missing half of his personalities. The leader's pretty much bested him. So I don't know how much fighting they're going to do more of just the thing and him doing exactly like you see in this picture and just kind of talking and seeing what they can do moving forward. All right. Next on my list, keeping with the Immortal Hulk train, we do have a King in Black one shot tie in. And uh, this one, the current persona of the Hulk that is out and about in the real world is the Joe Fixit persona. The leader is pretty much dominated and taken over half of his other personalities so this is promising that Joe fix it while he's like in the chair leading the way. He's just going to go out on the town. But because of current events in Marvel with the world being taken over by the symbiotes, you're going to he's going to be navigating through a world of symbiotes. So we're going to see how cunning and crafty he can be next on my list. It's one that I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to keep on my list. I was excited for it. It looked like the same format they started Immortal Hulk with. But we have that uh, reboot of Iron Man. It'll be issue number four from Chris Cantwell with beautiful covers by Alex Ross. This one is kind of piqued my interest a little more. So I'm hoping it goes in a good direction because the cosmic level danger Korvac is set loose again. And it's up to Iron Man to do something about it. And he's been reluctant about asking for help. And he's kind of being really stubborn about things. So we're going to see how it goes because that's not a threat that he can take on by himself or with that little sidekick he's got going on right now. But uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm sure they're going to be pulling in some extra help, or there's going to be some kind of twist to it because he definitely can't do it by himself. All right, that wraps it up for the Marvel books this week from me, and uh, I do have one indie title coming out, which I'm very excited about, and that's We Only Find Them When They're Dead, also a book from Al Ewing. This is issue number four, and in this one we see that uh, that battle that's been building up since issue one with Richter and Captain Malick is coming to a head, and it's coming to a head right in front of a living God. They did find one in the last issue. It woke up right at the end, so I'm super excited to see how this plays out. Richter just killed one of Malik's crew members, so he's probably heated about that, and it should be a great issue. The artwork has been really good. I'm just really excited about it. Next on my list, coming from DC, we have the conclusion, the final Ghostmaker story arc here, and that's going to take place in Batman issue 105. This, to me, has just been filler story between the Joker War and getting to Future State. I was excited at first for it. It's kind of fallen off. I'm hanging in there. So the, this is the final issue, and the synopsis for it sounds just like the synopsis for Joker War. Just interchange some people's names, but it promises to have a knockdown battle, a battle for the ages between Ghostmaker and Batman. The future of Gotham is at stake. The future of the Clown Hunters at stake. So it seems very repetitive. And like I said, it seems like it's been filler to me. I'll be happy to see this one go. Excited to get into future state. No big expectations for it. Just a nice little change of pace. I'm really even more excited about what they're going to do next. Next on my list, I have Superman issue number 28, also a big ending. Brian Michael Bendis' last uh, issue writing. And we have that Ivan Reyes artwork. It is beautiful. It's fantastic. And this is the finale to Mythological. So we have this ancient alien species called the Sinmar that has targeted Superman and has targeted Earth. And it's really uh, taking it out of Superman. And he's coming down to that final confrontation with him. He's been pretty much helpless against him this whole time. So this issue promises to have a really big uh, powerhouse move that's been years in the making for Superman. So I'm excited to see how that goes. It's been a beautiful book. It's been awesome this last little run. I've really enjoyed it. So let's see how it fin- uh, finishes out. Hopefully it goes strong. Next, super excited. We have another Tales from the Dark Multiverse. They're doing Crisis on Infinite Earths, one of the biggest comic events in the history of comic books. 
and we're going to get a dark multiverse take on it. So we're going to see what happens after the anti-monitor has been foiled, and we're going to find out what Earth remains in this twisted, upside-down, dark multiverse of the DC Comics universe. So I'm very excited about this. Huge JSA fan, so that cover looks very promising to me. We have Alan Scott over what looks like a dead Jay Garrett. So let's see where this one goes. Next on my list, also from DC, we have Rorschach, issue number three from Tom King. So this one is supposed to be following the kid, who is the sidekick to the would-be presidential assassin Rorschach from that issue one. So we're supposed to see her story in this, going from a child to a radicalized gun-toting performer to the would-be sidekick of the assassin Rorschach. And it gets into that, then it's supposed to get into what ties they really have to a bigger plot, bigger twist, and we're actually probably going to start getting into the real story now. So really excited about that. It's been decent so far. I'm sure it's going to get great. Uh, I have faith in Tom King's writing. He's done great with Strange Avengers. He's great with Mr. Miracle. I enjoyed most of his Batman run. So I'm really excited to see how far he takes this. He's got a lot of, a lot of room to play with. Next up, we have Endless Winter Part 4. This is going to be Aquaman number 66. I'm not going to give big synopsis of these because there's three separate parts coming out to Endless Winter this week. So I didn't read the synopsis for any one of them. I don't want to read Part 5 and spoil Part 4 and so on. But we have Part 4 with Aquaman in uh, issue number 66. We have Part 5 with the Teen Titans special one-shot. And then we have oh, – I'm sorry, Part 5 is the Justice League number 58, and Part 6 will be the Teen Titans special. So in order, we have Aquaman number 66 is Part 4, Justice League number 58 is Part 5, and Teen Titans special one-shot is Part 6. So we have seen up to this point that uh, the world's frozen over. They're, they're, all the heroes are spread out doing whatever they can to try to find some help. Flash has run into Black Adam, who has ties to this villain. Not, I don't even want to call him a villain. has ties to the Frost King, and uh, his, his little minions are overrunning the Earth to the point of even tiring out Superman because they just keep coming. There's, it, it's been pretty decent so far for what it is. It, again, no big expectations on it. Just a fun winter read. And uh, they started dabbling into that Justice League Viking a little bit, so hopefully they'll unravel more of that. It looks like we get a little snippet in the beginning of each issue that kind of expands on that past. And uh, they did get into the Frost Giants backstory in that Superman one shot from last week. So if you didn't pick it up, check it out. Check out that cover B, that Raphael Grizzetti cover. It was insane. It was definitely the cover of the week for last week. So finally, on my list for this week, and it's definitely my top pick for the week. We're getting close to the end here. I'm very excited. Hate to watch it go, but love to watch it leave. It's going to be Death Metal issue number six. So following the last stories of the DC Universe from last week, I'm really pumped for this. That was a great little story. If you're a Wally fan, if you're a Teen Titans fan, it was awesome. There was some redemption up in there. So I'm excited to see how much they take that momentum from that last issue and carry it on to this actual battle. Because what we see here is the entire DC lineup that's left standing. The heroes, the villains from all the different Earths that anyone that is a refugee has basically been on Themyscira or what's left of it. They've been organizing it, ready to take the fight to the Blackest Night. So while they're doing that, they're supposed to have the Robin King lurking on the sidelines with this whole army of goblins that we've seen him amass in previous issues. So I'm really speculating that the heroes are not going to take him out. They already expect for if their plan works, most of them are going to have to die. But I think that the Robin King is going to have something up his sleeve and take the Blackest Night out and kind of hopefully move forward past Death Metal. We get to keep that character around and kind of just do away with the Batman who laughs at least for a while. But that's my thoughts on it. That's what's on my pool list this week. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you're picking up. What should I be picking up? And I'm sure that there's a lot of other great books out there. There's more King and Black tie-ins going on. There's a bunch of X titles out there. And uh, if I miss anything, tell me to check it out, and I'll do my best to check it out. And uh, I do want to give a big shout-out to Paul and Donna at the Augusta Book Exchange, the keepers of my pool box. They always make sure it's full and they're safe every week. They're amazing people. You can find them on Facebook. And guys, we're to the end of this video, so be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And be on the lookout for that next content. And again, my name is Mark, but we are Legion.